the late and wonderful monarch Queen Elizabeth II really had this particular issue, shall we say, down off pat. Not something to achieve, in fact, because literally our monarch was, of course, the lady that went through so many of these. Of course, we're talking British Prime Ministers, but what truly happened at the very end? As ever, let me explain. Hi, Maureen. How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks so much for your time today. A little bit darker, isn't it? A bit grim. I'll have a quick wave. You all right? Yes, not bad, thank you. It, yes, I think we're going to have a bit of rain now. You know what it's like. Always happens, of course. The minute you get your camera out, you know, there's the problem. Darker weather. Yeah, I know. Moaning when it's too warm. Moaning when it's dark. I know you're never pleased, are you? Well, you know, it's been a long day because right now, as we all know, we're going through this election, you know, problem over here in the United Kingdom. And it is where we get to choose basically between, well, uh, three, four parties that all really look the same. I'm sure it's the same in your part of the world, you know. It's a very strange thing, isn't it, looking for political leaders. You have to try and think, can they do the very best thing for you? Of course, this is what made our late and wonderful monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, so sage and savvy because she'd met so many of them. Starting, of course, way back with the greatest, I would say, of one of our leaders, none other than Winston Churchill, right through to another great leader, Margaret Thatcher. But she did get on independently, apparently, with all of them from any party side. You know, she seemed to make quite a lot of uh, good friends, in particular Gordon Brown, uh, the Labour Party leader and Prime Minister. She got on well with him. Not so sure it was so friendly with Tony Blair, particularly after his memoir and of course his wife Cherie speaking out so vocally, shall we say. We'll just park that one there. But you see, it's a thorny topic because what happens is, as we now know, when you go into somewhere like the White House or any presidential palace, number 10 Downing Street, you go in in a blaze of glory. Everybody loves you. They're applauding you, you know, all of that. And you always leave, whichever way you look at it, in a moment of disgrace. It's not your fault. The public have decided. It's a little bit like X Factor, American Idol, Britain's Got Talent. Now you're voted out. That's the problem. But you see, what do you do when you're very final audience with the monarch? Now, Queen Elizabeth II used to feel very sorry for whoever it was that had been voted out because she knew that that had become their passion, their life for the last five years. And as she pointed out, your life is going to change very different, differently now and you're going to have to find new avenues. She was almost like a caring aunt, if you like, according to people who I've spoken to who literally knew her on those weekly audiences. Now, of course, one of the things that she liked to do, and this is where it gets interesting because His Majesty the King now may follow suit in this particular tradition. She always liked to give them on their very final visit a personal gift. So in the case of Alex Douglas Hume, she basically gave him fishing you know, equipment because she knew that he liked that. With Margaret Thatcher, she found it a little bit harder. So she gave her a copy of one of her favourite books, which I won't say because that's a private matter, apparently one of the very first editions, and a decanting set because Margaret used to like a nip of whiskey every night before bed. But of course, what could now His Majesty the King, if this be the case with the current British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, if he departs, what on earth could he bestow on him as a very final gift? Well, maybe one of these, an umbrella. I'm jesting, of course, but after the well, terrible situation that engulfed the Prime Minister when he was trying to make his very public address outside 10 Downing Street, this could be one of the most iconic pictures of a British leader, well, since maybe Thatcher or indeed Churchill. Either way, I think we've solved the problem for His Majesty the King, don't you? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.